This is Banjo, and today I'm going over the Digital Stores Management System, known as the DSMS, or simply the SMS. The DSMS page can be accessed by cycling the coolie hat left until the DSMS page is displayed, or by selecting the corresponding OSB button, which in this case is OSB 14. The DSMS page manages the stores loaded onto the aircraft. Inventory status and management, profile creation, selection and deletion, selective jettison, as well as missile control are handled through the DSMS page. Along the outer edge of the display, we're able to see that we have the hard points for our aircraft. Inside of that, we have the current weapon loaded onto these hard points. As we can see, hard point 2 is blank, although every other hard point has something loaded. Hard points 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 on the inside, we're able to see the quantity loaded on. And on the upper row of each box, we're able to see the weapon type, with information related to the weapon on the lower line. In this next example, we're able to see on stations 5 and 7, I have Mark 82s on triple ejector racks. 3 and 9, I have AGM-65 on LAW 88s, currently on standby. And on 1 and 11, I have AIM-9s, currently off. So I switch the master mode into air-to-air, -air, where we will see as their state changes accordingly. With information regarding the stations covered, we'll move on to the center of the display. In the lower section, we can see 1150 CM. This is our current ammo count and type for the GAW-8 main gun, being 1150 rounds of combat mix. We can see above this, weapons off. This is our current weapons profile. Since I have none selected, it'll say weapons off. Then above this, we have our master mode, currently CCIP. As I switch the weapon's arm state, we're able to see as the colors change, and in training we can see it's blue with the word training displayed. As I fire off some weapons, we're able to see as they're not actually being released from the aircraft, as it's in training mode. The colors for the master arm state are blue for training, white for safe, and green for armed. Here we're able to see on both the HUD and the DSMS as I cycle my master mode, CCIP, CCRP, guns, and nav. The state is displayed on the DSMS as well. To select a weapons profile, I'll set my HUD as my sensor of interest by pressing Kuliat up, and I'll set my master mode to either CCIP or CCRP, which point I can cycle the list of available profiles by using DMS left and right to choose the weapons profile whichever I desire to use. Now that the information and functions of the DSMS status page have been explained, we'll move on to the profile subpage, which we can see on OSB1. In the profile subpage, we can see all of our available weapons profiles listed, which we can cycle through using OSB 19 and 20. It's in this subpage that we can edit, create, and delete weapons profiles. With the profile selected, we can see view profile at the top, where I can view information relating to the profile, active profile on the left, which will simply enable the profile, as if I enabled it through the DSMS status page, or cycled to it using DMS left and right with the hottest soy. Next, with the weapons profile selected, we're able to see on OSB9, Pro On. If I select this option, it becomes Pro Off, and we're able to see on the third column of profiles, Off is displayed. Now cycling through the list of available profiles, we're able to see nothing coming up. It's because I've disabled these profiles. As I enable the 151 profile, we're able to see, as I cycle through the list, we only have access to the 151 profile. This will allow you to deactivate any profiles that you're not using if you do not wish to delete them. One thing to note about the DSMS is that even if you have profiles disabled, you're able to manually select any profile by simply selecting the corresponding OSB for the weapon station. Here we're able to see M slash and then a weapons profile. This indicates that it's a manual profile. Next, again with a weapons profile selected, we're able to see on OSB 6 and 7, we have move. This will allow us to move the order of the weapons profiles displayed in the profiles list. Next, with the weapons profile selected, if I select OSB3, the view profile, and enter the subpage, we can see that I could edit functions related to the profile. In this case, I'm going to change the name and create a new profile based off of this profile. I'm also going to change the mode to ripple single and a quantity of three, at which point I'll also enter a new name into the scratchpad, select OSB17 to enter the name, at which point I'll save the profile. This will generate a new weapons profile based off of these settings with the name I enter into OSB17 in addition to the existing M151 profile. If I want to simply edit this 151 profile, I would hit save on OSB3 without entering the new name on OSB17. Saving the profile will return us to the profiles list and we're able to see the new profile, M151 rip, displayed below the GBU-12 profile. If we now select OSB1, the status option, it will return us to the DSMS status page, and as I cycle the available profiles, we see the existing M151 profile, the GBU-12 profile, and the new M51 RIP profile with the relevant settings displayed below its profile name. 
The final function of the profile subpage that I'll cover is the ability to clear a profile. With the profile selected and OSB5 selected, the clear profile option, it will ask you to confirm the deletion, at which point you press OSB5 again, and the selected profile will be deleted. Clear profile will not be available if another weapons profile is not there to back up the existing weapon. With the weapon profile subpage covered, we'll move on to the missile control subpage, which we see on OSB2. As we see on stations 3 and 9, I'm carrying AGM-65 Maverick. These need to be powered up. To do this, we'll select OSB2 to enter missile control. As we see, we have some options relating to AIM-9 on the left, and some relating to options relating to EO power on the right. By selecting OSB4, the EO option, on and off, this will cycle power to the Maverick Seeker. By default, this will be off. As I enable it, we can see a timer start in the lower right section of missile control. This is the time since power has been enabled to the Seeker. I'll quickly display the Maverick page to demonstrate that it is now in a state of alignment due to having power cycled to its Seeker. On OSB5, we can see it's currently set in manual. This enables manual activation of EO power. Setting it to location, we can set it to activate automatically as we reach a set bearing and range from a set waypoint. We can enter these into OSB7, 8, and 9 respectively. In this example, it would automatically activate 270 degrees 12 miles from waypoint 1. The second form of automatic activation relies on the time value found in OSB10. If we select OSB5 again, we can cycle location to time. At this point, we can enter a value in the scratch pad, select OSB10 to enter this value. In this mode, EO power is cycled to the Mavericks after the set time value has been exceeded. Finally, on OSB19, we can select the AIM-9 mode, cycling between OFF and Argon Cooling. With the missile control page covered, we'll move on to Selective Jettison, which can be accessed off of OSB4 from the status page. Through Selective Jettison, we can jettison any stores and or racks we wish to. As we see, I'm carrying 6 Maverick 6 Mark 82. At this point, if I select stations 5 and 3, which I have the Mark 82 stored on, if I hold down weapons release, it will ripple off the bombs in an unarmed state, as we can see underneath Selective Jettison, it's set to safe. If I select OSB4, I can change this option to any kind of arming option I desire. So in the next example, I'll set it to nose arm and jettison a bomb and we'll follow it down and we'll see as it detonates on impact with the ground. There may be times when you need to jettison the entire rack to reduce the drag on the airframe, for example if one of your engines is destroyed. To do this, we can cycle the option to rack on OSB5. At this point I can select a station that contains a rack I wish to jettison off the aircraft and we can see triple ejector racks stored on 5 and 7 as I jettison them sequentially. At this point, we're still able to see on stations 3 and 9, I'm carrying 6 AGM-65 Maverick. These can be jettisoned as well. The rack can be jettisoned, as I've just done with station 9, or we can select OSB-5 until missile is displayed, at which point weapons release will fire off the weapon in an unguided state, and it will detonate after a short period of time. With the functions of Selective Jettison covered, we'll return to the DSMS status page, and we'll finally cover Inventory, which is the final subfunction of the DSMS. The Inventory subpage can be accessed through OSB5, although first I'll set my Master Army to Training, as I'm going to use Training Mode for this example. By default, at the start of a mission, the A-10's data cartridge that you load will contain the relevant weapons information, and it will be loaded into the Inventory page accordingly. But if you rearm mid-mission, you're going to have to re-enter the store's information into the inventory page. Also, in this training example, I could re-arm my training ammo through the inventory page, as it's all virtual ammunition anyway. To do this, I'll select Inventory on OSB5 from the DSMS status page. At this point, we're in the Inventory subpage, and we could select the weapon station we wish to edit the inventory store for. At this point, select the weapon type that's loaded onto the station, in this case, rocket, and enter the information regarding the weapon type. In this case, I'm using Mark 151 rockets on a triple ejector rack. Once you've entered the correct information for the weapon store being loaded onto the weapon station, pressing the load option on OSB9 will load the store into the DSMS for the selected station, while selecting the load symmetric option found on OSB10 will load the store on both sides of the aircraft symmetrically. In this case, I have a symmetric loadout consisting of mostly rockets, so I'll use the load symmetric option found on OSB-10. At this point, I'll repeat the process for stations 3 and 9. The one important thing to remember about working in the inventory subpage is that you must enter correct data. I'll demonstrate a few examples of incorrect data shortly. Also note, reloading the data cartridge reloads your inventory data as well. 
And as we're able to see, stations 3, 4, 8, 9 have the Mark 51 rockets rearmed for this training profile. In training mode, it keeps a separate set of weapon entries than it does when it's armed for training purposes. For example, our available profiles only include the GV-12 and Mark 51 profile, as the M151 RIP profile was created outside of training mode. I'll demonstrate this again in another example. We see on 5 and 7 I've released the Mark 82s on the triple ejectors, but if I switch the master arm out of training, we can see I am actually carrying 6 Mark 82s on 5 and 7. If incorrect data is loaded, here we can see that I have a bunch of weapons data even though I'm not carrying any weapons on my wings. If I select, we can see check loadout empty. This is the importance of making sure that the information you enter into inventory is correct common when rearming a different loadout from an existing loadout on the ramp. In a final example, we can see I have 6 Mark 82s on triple ejectors. If I set these to be CBU 105s, which is set to be loaded straight onto the weapon station, we can see that it generates a DSMS error, which can be acknowledged with TMS left short or the acknowledge button on OSB 11. Another example of a common data entry error would be to mix up Mark 82 error with Mark 82 general purpose. And that covers the functions of the data storage management system.